when man was created in Genesis 1.26, God had his dwelling place. That first man, Christ Jesus, was the dwelling place of God. In John chapter 2, Jesus Christ had gone into the temple and he chased out all those that were changing the money and those that were selling the animals for sacrifice and robbing the people. Did you know that Israel had set up a financial empire in the temple? You think it's something new because the churches today, you know, are having a, a bonanza, you know, with their tithing teaching and the, and the wages that are at the moment, especially if you've got a few CEOs in your congregation, I mean, you know, you're really going to be on, on easy street. You see? But the truth is, of course, that God dwells in us and we're not interested in all that stuff, you see. When God dwells in us, then heaven is in here. It's not up there. So this is where heaven is. And the Apostle Paul says, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, Don't you know that your body is the temple of God? So after he cleaned out the temple, some of the people challenged him and said, Lord, what authority do you show us, can you show us, that you have the right to enter into our temple? Our temple? <clears throat> Okay, uh, what right have you got to enter into our temple and clean it out like you've just done? So what did he say? He said, destroy this temple. And he was talking about this body. Now, I can tell you that Christ dwells in you. I can tell you that your body was designed to be the body of Christ. But I'm also going to tell you that if your body is still mortal, your body is not, in fact, the temple of God. Why not? Because there's too many temples that are buried in the cemetery plots. You see? If you're still mortal, then one day they're going to put your body in a box, unless you, you know, go by way of the oven... But, you, you know, they put your body in a box and bury it in the ground, and that's your temple. I mean, that's God's temple. And he said, upon this rock, which was not Peter, of course, it was the rock of his confession. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the rock upon which the church is built. And the gates of Hades, that's the grave, will not be able to affect it. Oh, brother, that can't be the church out there. Every week you've got another funeral going on there. You know, somebody's checked out again. That's why I'm never retired. All my friends that retired, I mean, they get there on the ramp, they're sitting in their rocking chair, and in about two, two, two years or so, they pack their bags and they're checking out. So I'm not about to do that. So we've got this problem. So Jesus said, destroy this body and in three days. I want to tell you, if God has never destroyed your body and you have experienced the three-day experience of the death, the burial, and the resurrection, you are not, your body is not the temple of God in reality. You see? So this is an issue, and we need to understand this. God is looking for temples. When in, jo in Matthew chapter 24, um, the disciples took Jesus out and said, this is this beautiful temple that we built for you. This is your house. This is, we, we built this for you. Forty-six years we took to build it. So it's no slap-up job. I mean, this is real, real beauty we put into this building because we built it for you. What do you think about that, Lord? And he said, tear it down. There'll be not one stone left upon another. Why? Because that was a prophetic statement from the Lord. The day of God dwelling in temples or buildings made with hands is over. 
2,000 years ago, I'm not talking about today, 2,000 years ago it was over. And we've got men today that are spending millions of other people's money to build these great edifices. Yeah, well, you know, his house anyway. Building it for God. Oh, Lord, help us. You see... It doesn't make sense, a lot of things, does it, you know, that's really going on. It doesn't make any sense. I just got blessed when, in 1968, I was over in India, and I saw what that man Buck Singh did in India, exactly the same as what um, uh, Watchman Nee did in China, exactly the same. These assemblies all over India... Uh, that he had established. They had no name, they had no central organization, they had, they didn't pay money into some headquarters. I mean, it was just the most beautiful thing. And I want to tell you, the thing that really impressed me was that this man, this Buck Singh, who was a high class Hindu, and when he came back to India, uh, as a Christian, his family wiped him said, you do not exist. Your name will be scrubbed from the list. It will never be mentioned with our family, and so on. But, of course, the whole family was converted after the first meal. Well, they'd put enough poison in there to kill an ox, and he ate it all and wanted a second helping, and they couldn't understand that. And they said, well, it's obvious your God is much better than the 3,000 gods that the Hindus have. So they diced the 3,000 and took the God of glory. So you see, these things are important for us. Flesh and blood. Chapter 15 in the book of 1 Corinthians, the epistle. And verse 50, it says, Flesh and blood cannot, cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you've got flesh and blood, hey, don't even apply for a ticket. You won't get in. Now you see, there are a lot of people in the kingdom ministry, they don't understand these things. They don't understand the constitution of the kingdom. See? Because we don't have kingdoms in the world today like there used to be. So we just don't understand that in the kingdom there's only one authority. That's all. And when people try to kid me that the church and the kingdom are the same thing, I tell them, it's a total impossibility. I said, you've got a king in every church, sometimes two or three. And everybody in that church has got to bow to him. What about Jesus Christ? He is the king of the whole earth. No, well, they haven't caught up with him yet, so they're just going to bow to another king. You see, therefore, the kingdom of God is not being established on the earth. And because flesh and blood cannot enter that kingdom... That puts a lot of people out that would like to be in. But I'm telling you today, because God is going to do something for you, if you will allow Him, because we're going to see the progress in God, how God is going to bring us to the place where we will step out of our mortality into immortality. Would you like to know that? Oh, God, help us. Lord, help us. This must not just be a simple knowledge or requirement. Lord, I just don't want to know how or what this thing is. I want the reality. That's what it's got to be. I want the reality. And I don't know. I'm a slow learner. It's taken me 40 years to understand what I'm going to share with you today. So listen, it says here, and man became a living soul. Not immediately. Why? Because that man was put into the Garden of Eden. Now, there are lots of things, and as we go along, I'm going to try and cover as many as we can. The Garden of Eden is not just a historic place 